right, here we go one more time. This is the uh, Behringer X32 producer digital mixer. Price is right. It's a little less than uh, $1,200 and uh, does an awful lot of things. The reason that we're making this video today is because this is really des this board is really designed to be a recording studio production board, and it does a fine job for a small little mixer. 32 inputs, for heaven's sakes, it'll do a lot. Uh, we're using it in a radio station environment, and the reason we chose to use this board is because we can generate a number of mix minus buses. And in our particular case, we needed four mix minus buses. Uh, we needed a mix minus bus for a Cromer X brick that was going to our host that was not, not at the studio. We also needed one for the Comrex telephone system that is at the studio, but we needed a separate mix minus bus for that. We needed a separate mix minus bus for the ISDN unit. Yes, we still use ISDNs from time to time. And then we needed another uh, separate mix minus bus for the Comrex access unit. So therefore there was four mix minus buses required and not that easy to come up with them. So this board does provide a really easy way in order to accomplish that. Uh, I want to give you a couple of ideas as to what, what you're looking at here is a, um, a screen version of it. And the cool thing about the screen version of it is you can set this board up in your studio and uh, log into it from anywhere in the world and operate it. And uh, I'm not so sure that anybody's actually going to do this. You could run a live show with somebody not even near the board. Of course, it would be a little hard to hear what's going on. You'd have to come up with some other arrangement for that. But nonetheless, that's, uh, uh, it is a way of doing it. In our particular case, uh, where we have uh, a, a board operator in one room and we have other people in other rooms doing other things, but they're also paying attention to the live show since it's a satellite network show, and in case the board operator forgets to do something, well, they can be there and be looking at this board, and they can do it for him in the event he forgets what to do. So what we have here is uh, the here is mix position number one is the host's microphone. That would be Phil Grandy. We have a stinger for his program that plays all sorts of separate, uh, audio cuts. We have the phone system with phones line lines one and line two. We have the ISDN uh, mixing position for ISDN A channel. We have the control room microphone. We have the Simeon automation system that has to play to play the spots and the openings and so forth. And then we have the Comrex access unit over here. So what we have set up here is I'll, I'll show you how we can actually operate the board. I'll give you an example. I've plugged uh, some things into my board here in uh, when I push th Bible. so the way this the way this board operates is that you don't push a button to turn the mixer on or the the module for that mixer or the mixing position or the pot if you will you unmute it so everything is normally muted unless you want it on the air and in this particular case I'm simulating the host so I'll unmute it fighting for your beliefs and for the entire month of November now it's just like I go, would were to go over to the board months. and push the uh, mute button it would unmute it and I'm doing that by the computer same thing is the stinger now but let me show you one other thing about this this business here with when you uh, switching to Patriot mobile is easy you can keep this is Phil's mic which it says up here because that's what how we identified it and then if you look over here, you're going to see that on bus number one, nothing is going to go out because that's what these little lines say. Nothing is going to go out when you turn that on on number one, on bus number one. Two, three, and four, everything will go out on. Now, when I turned that on, you notice this is the input. The inputs are always active. These, all these inputs have something on them, and that's showing you that there actually there is actually some audio there and when i turned it on that's the output of the board right there now when i go to the stinger i'm going to bring up put the stinger up now on the case of the stinger it's not a mix minus so it goes to all four of the sends so when i turn it on 
It's heading out to all four of the sends. Same thing with the phones. When I go to the phones, it's not the number two bus is the mix minus bus for the phone, and that's turned off for that phone line one and line two of the phone service. The ISDN, mix bus three, mix minus bus three is turned off, so it doesn't send itself to itself. The control room mic, well, it's going to go everywhere, so it doesn't, doesn't need a mix minus. The Simeon, it doesn't need a mix minus as well, and it's going to go everywhere, and I can... Open enrollment happens once. Turn that remotely off and on. And in addition to that, if I get over to the access unit, I'm going to turn it on. As you can see, it's there's the input of it. Nothing on the output. Now I'm going to turn the output on. Now we can't hear anything on the output because I have the output uh, plugged into my board, and that's where I was hearing the audio. So now th there is nothing going to go out on that bus uh, from there so that that would generate the mix minus. So it's a really rather simple board, but there's all sorts of other things you can do with it. For example, you can go up here and here are the sends. And uh, these, these are the actual sends and how they're going to be sent out. And when I click on uh, the, the Phil's mic, you can see that the audio is going to Send two, three, and four, because I turned his mic on. Now I'm going to go over to mixer number two, and I'm going to unmute that. Now it's going to go to all four of the send buses, because no mix minus is required. I'm going to go over to the phone, and you can see in the phone, this is number one, is turned off. So when I turn this on, by design. It's going everywhere except to mix bus two. That's the phone bus, just as I was saying before. Same deal with phone two. Uh, it's going to, we're using the same bus for that. And again, if I go over to the next one, you'll notice that this one's turned off, and that's bus number three, and that's the ISDN mix minus bus. Number four, no, there is no, um, no mix minus going on for the control room mic, no mix minus bus going on for the Simeon, and this one is the access unit, and it, number four, or mix minus bus four, is for that one. Now, I wanted to bring, bring your attention to a couple of other things. As you notice here, we can change the level of these buses at, at, at any time we want to. We can just reach over here, and let's just say that uh, we get entrepreneurship, uh, you know, it's scary. scary. Uh, but I need, they're, they're going to say, well, we need more of the phone guy the people who are calling in on the phone say they can't hear the host very well. I can increase that right here, bring that up. Just by changing it here, I, can, I have everything set more or less at zero. Uh, and that's the way, kind of the way I want to have the board set up. And all of these should be more or less on zero or close to it. Now, when the board operator moves the pots around or turns the switches off and on, he certainly can adjust them as well. And that's uh, pretty much how this, this uh, little board works. And it's uh, relatively easy to set up once you have the, uh, once you've uh, spent a little time with it, such as I have. Um, I, I found it take up about a full day to kind of figure out how to do it. There isn't any uh, YouTube videos to show you how to set this up as a mix minus board. Uh, although, if you thought about it, of course, it would uh, make sense if they, you're going to use them for stage speakers and so forth. You could simulate in your mind that that would be for a mix minus. Uh, you can also set them up for gazillions of, of uh, mixers. Uh, for example, this will show you a whole lot of There's so many things that you can do with this board. I'm just sort of flipping around here right now to kind of give you an idea. I mean, look at all the look at all the buses you have. It's 16 buses to work with, for heaven's sakes. Uh, so the price is right. It's a little challenging to set up. And as I say in all my videos, if you give me a call, I'll be happy to give you a hand and help you set it up now that I know how to do it. Another reason that I have uh, made, oh, a couple of other little ideas up here. Once you get all these things set up, you save these things in something called scenes. So this is Phil's Gang Live, and that's the scene. 
And after I have all these various configurations set the way I want them, I just hit save and I'm going to save everything, all the presets and everything. And I'm going to save it to uh, what is known as the, um, eh, let's see, send, I'm going to just save it like that. So you can save them as scenes. And then when you go to the board and bring it up, it will show you on the board which scene you're looking at. Now, if you had a couple of different types of setups for different programs with different pots, uh, they might be coming in on different codecs. You, there are also an additional eight presets that uh, you can use to uh, on the board that you can punch and then uh, little push a little switch, and it will rearrange the entire board for you based on your, your next preset. So again, it gives you lots of uh, flexibility. It also has a solo control, and in this particular case, the solo control is basically Q. So uh, you can push the solo button anytime you want to, and it will come out of your Q speaker. Uh, at the same time, it, it will not affect anything that's going out over the air, or you can punch it up before you go on the air if you want to make sure that your audio is sounding good there. It also has a talkback circuit so that I have wired the microphone, the control room microphone here, into a, um, a, I just put a splitter in and ran one part of the microphone to the talkback circuit and one part of the microphone to the live airboard. So when the operator goes over and pushes the talkback button, he can uh, be talking back to whatever I have predetermined. For example, in this case, he wants to talk back to uh, the number one uh uh, bus, which is where Phil's going to be, and I can push this button down, and you'll notice now I'm talking into the microphone over here, the other microphone, and you'll see that that's the talkback, but it's only going to that bus. That's the only place it's going to, and it doesn't affect the board. Now, if I were to punch up the board mic, I can do that as well. You'll notice it's down real low because I'm not very close to it, but if I go over here and I punch, unmute that button, and now talk into the mic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You'll see that I'm talking now out over the air, going to all four of the send buses, plus it's going out over the air. So it's a it's a neat little board. Uh, we wrestled with it for more time than we should have when we went to try to install it, and I had them package it up and send it back over to my office, and I spent the weekend learning how to do it. And uh, yes, I did take it. Take, took me an entire weekend. You could probably do it in a couple of hours. I'm a little slow at this sort of thing, but I do know how to do it now. And I think it, I'm very happy with it. I think it's a great board. The only thing it doesn't have is a button. So when you turn the control room mic on, it turns the speakers off. We're gonna I'm gonna build a little switch for that, so that so that that will work. Uh, and then that then he won't be getting any kind of feedback. So that's my uh, little nutshell version of the X32 Behringer Digital Mixer. Hope you like it. Let me know. Thanks.